She's a pretty girl, her friends are really pretty, so them attracting attention was pretty common. It's said that many of the victims' families are concerned about the crime scene at 1122 King Road being demolished. They fear that if the jury wants to visit the scene, then they won't be able to if the house has been demolished by that time. The victims' families were also all sent a letter. Real people, real lives and real crimes. Crime Stories Obsessed. I am Acting General Counsel for the University of Idaho and oversee the legal services for the university. I first want to express my condolences to each of you for the tragic loss that you have suffered and I greatly appreciate the positive manner in which you have interacted with the university in the aftermath of the tragedy. I am writing to communicate to each of you regarding the university's plans for the house at 1122 King Road. As was conveyed to you by the Dean of Students, Blaine Eccles, the homeowner gifted the house to the university with the intent that it be demolished. Before doing so, we will complete remediation within the house to address biohazards and chemical hazards that exist as a result of the crime and ensuring evidence. At the completion of the remediation, we intend to have the remediation team gather any items of personal property that do not appear to be contaminated and transfer them to university personnel who will take these items to a secure off-site location for representative members of the families to review and recover items of your family members that you wish to keep. Items not selected will then be properly disposed of. This will not apply to large bulky items such as sofas, beds or the like to the extent that any remain on the site. If you have specific items that you wish to be on the lookout for, regardless of size, please let me know. If we can locate and remain then, then we will. We intend to proceed with demolition as soon as after completion of the remediation as can be done. We do not yet have a specific date for when this will occur. We will notify you of the demolition date in advance so that you are not caught by surprise by media reports. In the interim, we are making every effort to respect the dignity of your loved ones and our activities will be done outside of media scrutiny as much as possible. The house is currently surrounded by construction fencing the windows and doors have been securely boarded and we are not allowing access into the house by anyone not specifically authorised by the university. Anyone authorised to enter the house will be required to agree to a strict non-disclosure and will be prohibited from taking photographs or otherwise recording the inside. This communication constitutes the university's formal notice to you of our intention to proceed with the remediation and the demolition as described above. If you have any concerns with these plans, please contact me by April the 3rd, 2023, as we will address these prior to proceeding. If you have retained legal counsel, I encourage you to share this communication notifying you will you have any proposed plans. Your counsel may contact the Office of General Counsel via email or call to the phone number listed above to discuss any concerns or objections you may have. Once again, I want to express my deepest sympathy and my condolences to each family member. It is my hope that the university's plan to remove the house keeps in your healing a reply indicating you have received this email will be greatly appreciated. This week, Autumn Gonzalez, the sister of Kaylee, was one of the victims who shared a heartbreaking TikTok video mourning the loss of her sister. Remembering I have an older sister, when stuff gets hard, she captioned the video crying in bed. I'll be in denial forever 
What about the plans we made? She added in other clips with her sister that she wanted her old life back and begged for just five minutes more with her. In other news, Koberger, who is a vegan, is apparently getting special dietary treatment in prison. They maintain that he is fed vegetables or rice and beans and his portions are small and he eats alone in his cell. He apparently gets an hour of recreation each day where he spends it isolated while the other prisoners get to spend it with each other. He can choose between spending time in the library or heading outdoors. He can take phone calls at the jail and he is allowed to use headphones when he makes calls for privacy reasons. A lot of the other inmates are curious about Koberger. They all speak about him, talk about his crimes. They maintain that he apparently avoids other people and keeps his head down. I read another article that said he is prohibited from speaking to any other inmates. It doesn't seem as though Koberger will try to plead insanity let alone guilty. But now it's almost been three months since Brian Koberger was arrested at his parents' house in Pennsylvania and charged with the murders of the four university students, Kaylee, Maddie, Zana and Ethan. And as he sits in a jail cell waiting for June the 26th, plans are currently in motion for a death by firing squad to be used instead of lethal injection they are struggling to acquire. We've been trying to carry out the death penalty, which is justice for those who have murdered in the first degree, and this has been for some time now. However, due to a shortage of the lethal drugs, it's impossible for Idaho officials to follow through. He added that death by firing squad is actually a more humane method of execution we cannot get the drug, we cannot carry out the death penalty. Only time will tell if this bill is passed. What do you think about the ongoing case? Let me know in the comments section guys and I'll be back with you again soon. Take care.